to yet another series uh, in the discussion of the Bible study has been uh, sponsored by the Diocese of Ife Anglican Communion. With me in the studio, we have a mommy who will be introducing herself to you people as we listen. Mama. Good day, viewers. Good day, listeners. Thank God for year 2023. I'm sure you are going to be blessed exceedingly in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Mrs. Mary Awofisoye. Thank you, ma. And our uh, Father and the Lord. The Venerable Ezekiel Adeyemo Adeyera. Thank you. You are also welcome. And God bless you and your ministry. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity to hear you speak to us. We look back, we are very grateful for your word, which you know have built family, have built home, have strengthened us in the various topics we consider the year past, especially the year 2022. Here we are starting afresh under a new topic for a new series. Holy Spirit, we ask that you open the eyes of our understanding. You give us an understanding here as a listening ear, even as you speak to us this year unto the future. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We pray, Lord, for the endowment from on high, the power that speaks, the powers that release, and the power that takes. You grant unto us all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for that which your word will do in our life Thank and you, homes. Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. Amen. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, we're looking at the theme, the grace of giving. And the sub-theme is to look at the nature of God. But going down, the real topic will be the God of grace, or otherwise called the gracious God, the God of grace. And for our test, we look at two different tests, one in the Old Testament and the other in the New Testament. First Chronicles 29, which our Father and the Lord will be reading. First Chronicles 29, from verses 11 to 14. And the second reading will be Second Corinthians 8, uh, 1 to 15, which our mommy will be reading so that we can lay a very good textual background. Yes, sir. First Chronicle 29 from verse 11. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heavens and the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and yours, it is to be exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor comes from you, and you reign over all. In your hands are power and might, and in your hands it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name, and those attributes which thy name denotes. But who am I 
and what are my people that we should retain strength and be able to offer doors so willingly for all things come from you and out of your home we have given you. Second Corinthians 8, 1-15 Second Corinthians 8, 1-15 reads And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since we excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. I am not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty you might become rich. And here is my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now, finish the work, so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed, but that there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will, seem, will supply what they need, so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality, as it is written. The one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. The word of God. Amen. Amen. Now the central aim of the study is for us to see grace as one of the attributes of God. In fact, a central attribute, if you want to use that word. And secondly, to open our eyes of understanding to the works of grace in our lives. That is the focus. And I'm, I'm sure, reading through those uh, uh, scriptural passages, you will know that it captured this objective very well. Looking at the person of God, and then looking at who we are and what is expected of us under that attribute of grace of God. And the introduction, grace is one of the comable attributes of God. And of course, Nehemiah 9, 17b emphasized that very fact as God as a gracious, merciful, good God. Uh, it is an enablement to do the will of God. God as the giver of all, we see emphasized in that, for, in that Chronicles that was read, Chronicles chapter 29, you can see a lot of the attributes of God central are the giver of all. The Psalms are saying it and then also amplified by David in that, uh, uh, in that text. This has given everyone under this heaven the grace to give. That's why I can say, that which you give unto us, we also give back unto you. As creatures created in the image of God, 
We are to share with others those things received from God at all times. And by His grace and without our help, we are on daily basis enjoying many, many good things created by God for our own good and growth. All that we have, any time, any day, is just by sheer grace derived from that central attributes of God, God being God of grace. By the time we go on in discussion, we are had the essentials to that which has captured in an introduction. Now let's look at the discussion guide because it's a Bible study. Uh, in your own understanding, he said we should explain the term God of grace. God of grace. Mommy, what can we say about that word? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we say God of grace or the gracious God, I think about a God who has the power and the ability to do all things mm. and he has everything in his hands. And as much as he has everything in his hand, he's willing to share those things that he has with everything that he has created. For example, in the book of Genesis, before he made man, he made everything that man will ever need. The air, the water, the animals, the plants and everything. And he made them generously. Water everywhere, air everywhere. And as we move on into the New Testament, we see him giving us Jesus Christ the one and only begotten Son, to give us salvation and giving us the Holy Spirit to enable us to make heaven. So we see that this God is kind, he's generous, he's loving, he's caring, and he gives everything in abundance. So that's the way I see the gracious God. Okay, my Father and the Lord. Thank you, sir. How do we explain the time? God of grace. Unless, if the if grace, the term grace, has been divine as the unmerited favor, extended to men, to generations of mankind, then God of grace is simply telling us that that favor extended to us as human beings, that kindness extended to us, the gift extended to us in various form is in the custody of God. So God of grace is telling us that all the resources we need to sustain us spiritually, physically, economically, earthwise, in everything is in the hands of God. God has them in store. And because of this, he and is ready to give it to us freely. Because there is nothing to exchange for what God is ready to give. Nothing to exchange by our own nature. Okay. So we can see that time, I mean, we can continue to talk about because everything about God center around his grace. Yes. Everything we receive, everything we enjoy is just at its own dictate, at its own direction. And all encompassed in the fact that we see him as his attribute is grace. And of course, they like normally say in the acronym, they will say grace itself, just as our father has said, Merited one. He say, God reaches his righteousness, is everything at the expense of Christ. He say that is what grace actually means. In other words, and we know that all everything consists, just like the psalmist says, consists in Christ. Exemplifying God of love, of goodness, of mercy, of loving kindness. That we can say is the central attribute. And we, I believe you can also look at it in that time. Uh, then we press on to look at the second discussion uh, question. If there is any, say mention those things that can 
enhance the grace in someone's life. Yes, God of grace, unmerited, he said, it. but he said, I say, it's not by works, so that anyone boost. could boost, boost, yes, but there are certain things that can enhance. He's talking about enhancement here. Yeah. When you enhance something, not necessarily that you really work for it. Thank you, sir. Uh, grace is like an engine that drives our life. Mm -hmm. Without grace, nobody can be safe. Nobody is a Christian without the grace of God. It's the oxygen that makes Christian to breathe, that sustains us. Mm -hmm. And so, looking at it from that perspective, the question is now, how can we enhance it? Yes. Yes. We have laid the foundation from the first question. That's it. The grace is in the store of God. God. It's the riches that God, that is available only at the disposal of God. It's only available with God. And for us to enhance it, because it has been paid for. Jesus had paid for it. It's the only sacrifice that has opened the door of grace to us. Mm. And as human beings, we can enhance it. Mm -hmm. Because there is a level of grace that every man can enjoy. The sun that is shining now is a grace of God. And it's that is a, and is is given to everybody irrespective of who you are, whether you believe in him or not. Or not whether you are a wicked person, the witches and wizard, they are enjoying that grace. It's a common grace that is given to all. But it goes beyond that. A level of grace is called a saving grace that has been paid for through the death and the resurrection of Christ. And it will only take people who acknowledge the death, the sacrifice paid by Jesus, that we enhance that grace to appropriate it over their life. Hmm. So the key to unlock the grace of God, to enhance it, is your readiness to accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. That enhances it. That enhances it. When you do that, you have ignited, you have opened the door. Enhancing you the, have grace. Enhanced the grace. That comes. And God can, without any, any no, no disturbance, the grace can just flow over our life so. on a daily basis. Understanding the person and knowing, uh, coming under the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Enhancement. Enhancement. Um, yes. Uh, having given our lives to Christ, we are expected to walk in obedience. Yes. So obedience to the law of God, obedience to the commands of God also enhances grace of God. Because when you have a child that is obeying you and doing good, there is tendency that you love that child and you give them, you help them in everything that they do. So when we live in obedience to the will of God, that enhances the grace of God upon our lives to be able to do more. And one of the commands of God is to give. Because we are made an, in the image and likeness of God, God expects that having received from him, we should also be able to extend our generosity to our fellow brothers and sisters. So our giving of our time, of our talents, of our materials, of our money, of everything that God has blessed us with, will also enhance the grace of God upon our life. Because like the book of Luke 6, 13 says that, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down and shaken over. Okay, so which means grace, even though we do, we not work for it so that we don't boast, but we can enhance. Yes. We can enhance grace. through obedience, through sharing, and most importantly, by giving our life to, to the source of grace. Yes. 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we press forward, we just look at first Peter 4 time. Time is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, first Peter 4 10. And then they say we should explain that which is expected of us as beneficiary. We have started looking at it, uh, but let's press and emphasize from the scripture. First Peter uh, 4 10. First Peter 4 10 says, yes. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Okay. So we see uh, what is expected of us as beneficiary. As beneficiaries, God expects us to serve others. We also should be servants to our brothers and our sisters. So that's what the emphasis is on. To share that which God has and given. Yes. Must be generous with what we have. Be generous. With that is the expectation. We should not be stingy. That we which we have received, we call it share. And I think that is the the main concept of the teaching of Paul in first in that uh, Second Corinthians chapter eight, looking at their willingness, their desire yes, yes. to release that which God has given unto them to support. Those who are actually not by compulsion, but willingness as a combined despite team, the ashi, despite the, the ashi, ashi of that time, of that time, despite the ashi, they were hoping, they were generous. Yes, and uh, just as has been said, because they have also first of all received mm -hmm. the grace yes. of salvation, yes. the saving grace in Christ. Yes. Then it Give became it very life. easier for them mm -hmm. to do. Uh, Praise the Lord. Yes, and um, sometimes we see a situation where we are not able to do anything. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget the place of prayer. Because sometimes you see a situation where you cannot help. Trouble in Iran, trouble in Iraq, trouble in Nigeria. And you say, what can I do? I can't. But you can go on your knees. You can fast. You can pray. It's part of the g gifts and that God, God has given unto and us. And God can then use it also. Now, finally, because of our time, very few minutes to go. We say, mention some of the benefits and in the contrary, the consequences of Paul that we accompany the grace of God. But let's look at the benefit. And of course, we know that if we are not deriving benefit, then the consequences will be negative. So what are the benefits of the grace of God? Uh, an individual or a family or the church or even the nation. Uh, one or two scriptural readings because of time. First Corinthians 15, 9 to 10. Our father will be looking at that for us, and then we can, mommy, Acts 20 32, and then uh, finally we look at it from uh, Second Corinthians 9 8. We we'll give one or two others that people can read on their own and also look at benefit there. Then, the first Corinthians, which we first Corinthians 15, 20, 9. 20, first Corinthians 20 32. Now I commit you to no, God. Acts, that will be Acts. Oh, Acts, yeah. Okay. Acts, Acts 20, 32. Okay. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Okay. So we see the benefits here as being sustained. God building us up for our heavenly kingdom, for that mansion that has gone to prepare for us. So, that is our inheritance. So we in see Christ. the benefit there, sustainability, and being built up for eternal inheritance. Yes? First Corinthians. Uh, 15, 9, 15. To 9 10. Okay. First Corinthians 15, 9, 10. Yes. For I am the least of the apostles. Who am I not fit or deserving to be called an apostle because I was once wrong and pursued and molested the church of God. So? But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. So what are the benefits? The benefits of the grace of God as confessed by Paul here the grace of God has chosen him, has separated him from the world, has taken him from the wrong path to the right path. Amen. And again, the, the grace of God has also 
earth has elevated him mm. as the least of all the apostles. Mm. And now he's saying he has walked above them all. Mm. So the grace of God is the one that is showing us the right path. That is, without the grace of God, it is difficult for a sinner to come out of his sin. Mm -hmm. And then be of value. And be of value to God. To, to the society. To the society. So he did to the it. church. Yes. And to the nation at large. At large. Thank And in conclusion, uh, and don't forget, you can contribute, you can ask questions on WhatsApp on 081 I repeat, 0814 one two and we listen to your comments or your question and we respond accordingly conclusion say the almighty god that we are serving is the god of grace with great abilities and capabilities he is likewise expecting you to manifest his gift in various areas of your life as his child you are all to always walk in the consciousness of that grace all the time in other words by nature you are image of God. By nature, God is God of grace and has made things, all things available for our benefit, for our use. But in turn, in reciprocating it, he also expects us here in this world, seated, situated in this world, to also extend that grace to others as we lose ourselves, as we lose our substance, as we lose our life to serving humanity. And if you are able to do that one, how wonderful the nations of the world, the community of the world will have been, the people around us will have been, our nation will have been all to the glory of God. The memory verse is 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every Amen. good work. May God make us to do good works Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to thank our mommy, mommy Mary, our officer for being there. God will continue to enhance your anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. And our Father and the Lord, the Venerable Ezekiel, Adeyema Adeyera. God bless you and your ministry. Amen. You know, you also come and come and come and come again. Father and the Lord, pray for us. Our Father in heaven, we thank you very much for your word that has gone out. And Lord, we pray that the consciousness to always yield ourselves to the work of the grace, you will grant unto us Amen. today. We pray for those who have not acknowledged the work of your grace, that Lord, we pray that by the reason of this encounter, your grace shall be meaningful in their life. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because you know your father. Thank you, Lord. And when we meet again, it shall be for your glory. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.